For the cuts, we have all the seven cuts we use with the broadsword. Cut number one, cut number two, three, four, five, six, and seven, of course. And you can do these really as cuts, depending on the shape of your axe head. So you can pull them back and cut. Don't swing too wide, that is not necessary. The tomahawk has enough impact power in the axe head to create damage even with little motions. So if you really want to slice and to cut, this is, this is a better motion, okay? The other thing is with the axe head, of course, you can do kind of attacks and deflecting and uh, also slap attacks with the side with the flat of the axe head. So you can from this side, you can come from below, you can come from above, you can do like a backhand slap and then cut. And you can also, um, in example, when someone tries to thrust you in the belly with, um, with, your, uh, with a knife or something like that, you can slap from above on his hand. So this kind of using the complete uh, broad side of the axe head for uh, slapping motions. The other thing is, here's kind of a slight uh, hammer head. Sometimes you have these big pipe heads and you have sometimes tomahawks and hedges with spikes. Uh, but even if it's just round and you don't have anything, it still is okay to use these kind of, uh, with the back of the head, you know, like uh, overhand from here, you come from here with an overhand, you can do kind of this backhand blow with the back of the hammer and then move to another cut, you can also use a quick backhand blow with the, with the head, the other side of the head here. And um, for example, if someone you fight someone who has a, an open hilted sword or a knife or, or a tomahawk himself, and you can go from below with a cut number eight, like cut number eight, a back edge cut, as we would call it with, with, a, with, a, with a hanger or with a, with a, a saber. Or back sword, you come. <coughs> sorry, you come from below quickly against his hand. By the way, for the backhand cut, the thumb grip is quite handy because you are more versatile. Especially when you come from below up, you have some kind of stopping. You can stop with the with the thumb motion, so you don't rip it up here. So you come here with a quick strike to his hand or quick strike to his face. Of course, all these motions you can do with the half choke grip. You can cut, okay, you can do the back, uh, with the back of the head, you can do this, and you can do also the flat of the blade, or the flat of the axe head, using this, in this kind of motion, also in the half choke. When you have the full choke, um, you have more like punches, rakes, so ripping here, cutting, um, and using especially this kind of punching motions, um, with, a, with a full choke, but of course you can also cut in different angles. You can do like an upward slash here, okay? You can do like this upward slash, you can do a horizontal slash, you can do from the other side. Um, so you would not turn this like this, but you would just go here from right to left, from left to right, upwards here, upwards here, and also upwards here. So this is also quite nice in the full choke. Uh, slaps and, and such things you can also do, but that's not really where the axe head comes in handy. And of course, the back is also not useful here. But all everything here with the blade works quite nice. Just to note on the way how you cut, so you can use kind of really cutting by pulling it, okay, like with a saber. You can also kind of doing snap cuts forward, okay, like you would do with uh, an iris stick or like you would do with a knife. Okay, there again the thumb grip comes in handy, so you do kind of the snapping motions, the snap cuts, uh, nearly a thrust, but you know, kind of the snapping cuts. Um, and you can also do um, uh, kind of longer cuts, so with a moulinet, but keep in mind that you have, um, that you have the moulinet from your wrist and not doing kind of big arm swings, but just quick motions, okay, keep in mind your hand might be uh, uh, in danger here to get cut, but there you have kind of these moulinets with the axe head um, being the, you know, um, point of 
percussion. So um, this is something you, you, you can really train um, using small chopping motions, really pulling, cutting motions here, and of course kind of moodiness where you follow the axe head and do this kind of um, figure eight patterns and whatever comes in the way of the head gets cut. Uh, so keep in mind you don't have to move the axe like rah, and hack, rah, okay? It's also okay to just do a quick chop from this side or that side. Let's talk about thrust. Yep, you heard right, thrust. You can thrust with a tomahawk. Not only if it has a real spiky pointy head here, even if it's just a, a head like this, or even if it's going curved downwards, because you have a broad metal surface here, which you don't want to get smashed into your face. So we have two um, or three different kind of thrusts. The first one is just trying, like imagining you want to get the point, the narrow part here of your exit forward into the face or whatever target face is always a good target into the face of your opponent. And there also the sun grip comes in handy. So we have it here, retract it and you go forward and thrust to the face. You can also do this in a horizontal position, so you get him all the broadside of your axe head. You can do the same in the horizontal position, and you can also do the same in kind of a hanging thrust position. This is also not too bad for different uh, for different situations. For example, you hook away an incoming attack and come from here and thrust above his defense into his face before you do something else. Okay, so um, three types of thrusts. Straightforward with a point, horizontal with a complete broadside of the exit, and in this kind of uh, hanging guard position. Now, of course, these thrusts also work with a half choke grip, okay, even quicker, but then I think they don't have so much power like with having it um, in the long grip. However, it still works. And in the half choke, you can also use the thrusts. As I said, you have kind of this punching thrusting motions with the edge, but this can you also use from upwards, downwards. For example, you grab some, somebody in close quarter combat behind the neck or on his hair, and then you smash this surface into his face. It's also kind of a thrust in the full choke position of your hand. Uh, defensive options, um, of course. As I said, I don't have hand protection, I don't have a long blade, so I don't try to parry attacks with the wooden shaft. Not so much because the shaft could be damaged and then could break, which is also a possibility, but also I'm way too close to my hand. So I want to use the attributes of the heavy axe head to defend against incoming attacks. So all motions I do are more like deflecting parries or more like uh, hooking parries. So deflecting parries are when you use, not only when you use the flat of your blade, but then they are the easiest that you example a cut number one to your head you use the flat of your blade in a kind of a, you know a car wind shield whipper cleaner forgot the term in English so this kind of round motion from your right to your left from your left to your right and combined of course with footwork you can do also go for for another attack so you have these clearing motions attack cut number one up up Okay, take cut number two, bop, bop, okay? You can take the swing here to clear the space. You can also do, as I said, finer motions against the thrust to your, to your belly. When the weapon is short enough, to go back, slap the hand. You go back, slap the hand from the side, here from the side. So you try to get away this, everything with kind of the deflecting slap with a heavier axe head. The other possibility are stopping thrusts. Um, so if someone comes and swings at you, you go forward, maybe you can stop his hand, maybe you can stop him by smashing his face, or if he attacks your belly, you can put it down here, do kind of shift with your leg, put it down here against the forearm, against the hand, and try to, to make kind of a, a push-stop thrust. Uh, the most interesting um, defensive option with a tomahawk, of course, is a hooking ability, because of the blade shape here especially with this kind of round shape but also if it's more straightforward you have this kind of hooking abilities 
And this can be a pain in the ass, to be honest, when you train with someone or fight with someone who has also a tomahawk because you get hooked here and both start pulling. This is really important to train how to get out of this situation again. But generally speaking, you can take an incoming attack, turn your, um, turn your uh, tomahawk a little bit and hook it away. And important is, many make the mistake and I, I did the same, I went with my hand first and it gets struck. You have to move, train that your axe head is forward. So you want to catch it here. Here you want to catch the incoming attack that the axe head is first and pulls it away. If you go too, f f uh, too soon with your hand, you get struck before you can hook. So train this hooking motion. It feels a little bit awkward, but train this hooking motion for yourself to your inside and to your outside. Okay? To the outside you can also combine this with footwork. So cup number two comes here and you come here and pull down here. Okay? So this one and this one. And of course this works also quite well against the thrust with kind of an inside half hanger, okay, like so. And then for example you can go here and here. I will make another video with training partner where I show some technical examples um, of how to use this uh, effectively. And of course you can use the hook in the, this kind of half choke position as well. So these are possibilities of the tomahawk in combat. And of course you can combine this with all kinds of trappings, all the binds which we did. You can do for example here uh, stopping a cup number one with a high inside hanging guard, grab the wrist, get your tomahawk loose and use it. You can also go to your outside and hook here, trap with your free hand and smash and cut and chop and whatnot. But I will show this in some technical examples separately because with an opponent this makes, or with training partners this makes more sense. As I said, I prefer swords uh, over tomahawks, however, you saw I uh, do like to use a tomahawk and a lot of things which you do with a tomahawk also are, uh, uh, you can also adopt on a short cut shoe or something like that. Um, I also like the tomahawk as a sidearm with another weapon, so as, as the offhand weapon. Um, so an example you can use it with a back sword, okay? You can use all your cuts and guards and whatnot, you can go for the full choke to use it like a dirt to parry, but you can also do all these kind of hooking motions and slapping motions. For example, you fight someone, have a spadroon or, or a back sword thrust to your belly, you can use the inside half hanger to cut away and at the same time, um, to hook away and at the same time do a counter cut, okay? Uh, you can also uh, do kind of a cross parry with both weapons, hook down the weapon of your opponent and you're free to go. So with an offhand as an offhand weapon I really like the tomahawk. Not only with a back sword but also with a small sword. You can laugh about me but uh, it's as nearly as good as a parry dagger as an offhand weapon in my opinion. I would use it then a little bit more in the half choke grip and then use all these kind of parry um, motions I can do, but of course uh, this is a little bit awkward maybe in the beginning, but it works quite nice as a parry tool with a small sword as well, or a spadroon. Of course the best partner for the tomahawk in close quarter combat is a cutlass or alehouse dagger or some other big knife, uh, especially the cutlass as the main weapon. So if you have a big knife like dirt or, or a bowie knife, you might work a little bit different, but um, the more hand protection you have on your knife or dagger and the longer it is, the more they get, you know, like even or the, the weapon gets to be the main weapon. So the, the, the big knife or cutlass becomes the main weapon. Um, however, it depends on your personal preferences, okay? Someone says the tomahawk is my main weapon, I use uh, a knife as the secondary weapon. Another guy says uh, I prefer the big knife or cutlass or alehouse dagger and I use this as my main, main weapon and then use the tomahawk um, uh, or hatchet as my offhand weapon. So depends on your personal uh, taste and preferences. Sometimes we hear also references uh, from uh, medieval Scotland and Renaissance Scotland, the Highlanders using uh, small axes, hand axes or hatchets together with shield, which could be a buckler, but could also be a targe or as a shield. I have a targe here now, uh, so of course you can use all the techniques we trained um, with broadsword and the targe 
and you can grab uh, hand axe, tomahawk, whatever hatchet you like and you can start to uh, try out this combinations keeping in mind that you have a different weapon now but generally speaking this works quite well um, like you use the broadsword together with a touch you can use the tomahawk together with a touch thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this little trip into the world of the tomahawk as i said this is my personal approach this is how i did it or how i trained it over the years as i said it's not my preferred weapon or the main weapon i would use really like it as an offhand weapon but of course if you have an offhand weapon it's good to know how to use it if you lose your main weapon as well and you never know when you are just you know splitting some wood uh, chopping some meat making a campfire enjoying your time and suddenly you are attacked by a frenchman or a british man or whatever man or woman and you have to defend yourself with what you have uh, close by and that might be your tomahawk uh, or hatchet. So, see you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it. And maybe I will do some more lessons on the use of the Tomahawk in the future. Maybe not. But I will definitely make that video where I show you some hardman drills. But um, for now, I will show you some examples of the Tomahawk being used in sparring as a main weapon with a secondary weapon or as an offhand weapon. So, enjoy.